Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining the webinar. In this webinar, we're going to see how Spring Boot and NetBeans work really well together. My name is Geert Jan Bielinga. I am a product manager from NetBeans, netbeans.org, the free and open source IDE, the official IDE of the Java platform. My blog is at blogs.oracle.com slash Geertjan. And let's get started. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through a simple Spring Boot scenario and show how to bootstrap, how to set up that scenario using NetBeans IDE 8.1. We're going to start um, simply um, with um, the start.spring.io site, so the Spring Initializer. We're going to start here and uh, choose a couple of um, dependencies from this, uh, from this list here, and we will generate a project. Uh, we'll import that project uh, into NetBeans, and then we'll start uh, doing some work. Basically, what we're going to do is uh, use the command line runner from Spring Boot to initialize some values into a JPA repository from Spring Data. We're going to use the Spring Boot actuator to get some metrics and some health checks on our system. We're going to use uh, Spring Loaded, which is a useful JVM agent for reloading class file changes while the JVM is running. We'll also be making use of a helpful tip, which will mean that we won't use the built-in the built-in deployment um, features of NetBeans, so we won't use the servers that are packaged with NetBeans or the server support. Instead, we'll use the Spring Boot Run Maven Build Goal that is described here. And also, we'll make use of some plugins, and these are in your resource tab within this webinar. And we'll make use of the uh, Spring Boot tools for NetBeans plugin, which will give us a number of file templates and code generators. And we'll also um, refer to a plugin by Agilos, um, a NetBeans developer in Greece, for setting up configuration files and using code completion with that. So let's begin. I'm now inside of NetBeans IDE. NetBeans IDE is free and open source. It is focused on being comprehensive. It is focused on letting you create useful applications right from the start without needing to install any kinds of plugins. You can see I can create Java applications, JavaFX, um, web applications, Java E applications, HTML5, JavaScript, Maven. I can create NetBeans modules, and there's a long list of sample applications for various technologies. I can open multiple projects at the same time, and um, there's all kinds of features that we'll look at in a bit more detail later. So let's go back um, to the Spring Initializer page and set up our application. Here's the Spring Initializer. You're going to need uh, JPA. You're going to need H2. You're going to need web and we're going to need REST repositories. We'll switch to the full version here and specify war instead of jar. And then we click this button here, and as a result, we download a zip file. I go back to NetBeans. And I import that zip file, I import project from zip. And I browse to my downloads folder where that zip file is found. And I'm going to put this into a specific folder, uh, demo app. And now NetBeans is um, unzipping the zip file. And opening that project. Uh, here it is. We didn't have to do anything magical. We just uh, pointed to that zip file, and NetBeans knew what to do with it. It unzipped it. And because it has a POM file, NetBeans knows it's a Maven project. 
we can look at a graph showing the dependencies, kind of useful right in the beginning when we're just getting started. I press Control Shift Enter to make this very really large to remove everything else. And we can drill down into particular dependencies and see, um, you know, zoom into those dependencies and see how they relate to each other. We can also see if there are any problems. We can zoom in, we can see the relationships between the various dependencies in our configuration. We can also look at the effect of PUM, which is quite useful because we can see where the various entries in the PUM file come from. Long list of um, dependencies here. And here is our local PUM file for this particular project that we've created from the archetype. And we can see that we have, um, as specified, um, a Spring Boot project. We're making use of H2 database, as you can see here. And so we have our basic um, project ready uh, to be used and uh, to do something with. The first thing we'll do is um, change the way that we deploy the application. So rather than how we would traditionally do it, making use of the servers that are built into NetBeans, we're going to change the deployment that will happen when we press run here. Because the interesting thing is that this list of project commands map to Maven goals in our POM file. You can see that when you look in the project properties of the project in the actions tab, you can see that when you build project, we're doing a Maven install. Clean project is Maven clean. Run project is Maven package. Everything that you can see when you right click on here, so therefore these are also mapped to keyboard shortcuts. We have an F6 for, for running and an F11 for building. You can see these uh, keyboard shortcuts here. Um, so when we invoke those actions by pressing the keyboard shortcuts, we can actually, instead of something magical, we are simply referring to Maven goals. So we want to change this um, using the tip that I referred to earlier. And I've just generated the uh, run command that we want to have in our project. So I move this from here, and I go to the properties dialog again. So here's properties dialog. In there, I find my actions, and I find run project. And instead of package, we want to have this reference to the Spring Boot a run command, which is what we'll be using instead. And we set that. And we press OK. And now when I press F6, I'll be calling the, um, the run command. And I can do the same thing from the keyboard shortcuts and uh, other items within uh, NetBeans. Okay, so we're, we're in the piece here. So now I've pressed F6, and I'm immediately asked uh, which server do we want to use. And we say here, ignore, because we don't want IDE managed deployment, so we don't want to use one of the available servers. We want to use the embedded Tomcat server instead, uh, provided by Spring Boot. So I've pressed F6, and we're using the Spring Boot embedded Tomcat server. And we can take a look here to see what's going on. So Spring Boot is starting up. And among other things, Tomcat is starting up. And the final message that we see is started demo application. So at the very least, if we go to localhost 8080, we should see something. Uh, let's go into the browser local host 8080. Okay, so we see a starting point. So we can see also this back in NetBeans. Um, that profile is one of the uh, endpoints that we can refer to. You can see here profile, you know, slash profile, slash repository. But let's add some more here. Let's add slash metrics and slash health. And we do that by means of Spring Boot Activator. Adding Spring Boot Activator is really quite simple if you're using NetBeans. Um, 
we can search for dependencies. So I'm going to do that now. I can say add dependency, and I could search here for actuator, for example. And uh, you can see here various things come up. But um, there's, by the plugin that I've installed, the Spring Boot Tools for Mapping, I can do out and search, and then say here Spring Actuator, and simply adds the dependency I need. If I use code completion here, by the way, on the, the version element, you can see that Mapby shows me all the available versions for the dependency I'm using, which can, of course, be very useful to see whether I'm using the most recent uh, version or not. Also, Spring Boot itself is currently the latest version is 1.3.2. That's the one that I'm on. So I've added Spring Boot Actuator. What you're going to do is you're going to just stop um, our application and then just redeploy it, and it doesn't take much time. It doesn't really matter, um, this redeployment. It takes about you know, 10 seconds or something for, um, this, for Spring Boots to, uh, to start up via its own uh, run command, and including the embedded uh, Tomcat. So that's absolutely no problem at all. We get some additional um, endpoints now. You can see here, metrics, actuator, dump, um, and there's also health, and there's trace. So let's go to the browser and try those. What you can also actually do is you can open the internal uh, web browser instead of switching out to, um, to the external browser. So I'm going to say embedded WebKit browser, and then I'm going to open that browser. So here it is. And now we'll just type localhost 8080, and for example, health. Um, let's just open 8080. Okay, that's not working for me. Anyway, um, you're actually fine out here. It's a bit of a switching around. And if I put health here instead, you can see I get some health statistics. And if I put um, metrics, let's take that into NetBeans. Just switching it to the tiresome. And let's take all this in here. Okay, there we are. We seem to be okay. So I'll put here health. And you can see our health. So let's just stick, uh, stick to NetBeans. Um, we have our browser built in here, so that's uh, great. So what else can we do here? So you can see this profile, and there's metrics, and there's mappings. So let's do mappings. So we get all kinds of information uh, given to us by Actuator. OK, so let's um, go a bit further and create the application. We have here a demo application, so the Spring Boot application at our starting point as you would with Spring Boot. Uh, what you're going to end up doing is um, connecting into this uh, Spring Boot uh, backend with an HTML5 front end. And I'm going to pull up that application already. Here it is. So we have an application that's going to access that backend from a different domain using JavaScript and, uh, and HTML. But that needs cores. Now, that's, that can be kind of tricky to set up as Spring Boot core support. So uh, we can see here I have spring cores, and I just select that, and here it is. So it's just generated when I right-click and I choose out insert, or when I choose insert code or out insert. You see that one of the items here is spring cores. This comes from the Spring Boot tools for NetBeans plugin. And so we won't have any problems with uh, cross-origin resource sharing as a result of doing this. Next, um, let's uh, create some kind of reservation system. Uh, so we start by going into the Spring Framework category. So what I did is I right-clicked on the package. I went to New. I went to Other. And in the New File dialog, where we are now, we can also press Control N uh, on the package. Uh, Control N, here we are, Spring Framework. And the first three here are, are made by default. These last three are added by the Spring Boot Tools for NetBeans plugin. I choose a simple entity, and we'll call it reservation. 
and contains what you would expect. It's a JPI entity class. It has um, uh, two getters for an ID and a reservation name. It has two constructors, a default constructor and a constructor that receives um, a reservation name. Uh, we have a long and a string. We have generated value on annotation on the long, on our ID, and we have a two-string that um, gives us something meaningful from our ID in our name. We could also, instead of creating it in the way that I did, um, we could uh, press Alt and search here. I'm, I'm doing that. Or you can do insert code, and then you can generate setters. So right now, our, both our properties have uh, getters, so we can't generate get, um, getters anymore. But you can see that we can generate a lot of additional things here, uh, constructors, um, HSO, spring cores, create properties, um, equals and hash code. We can include a whole range of uh, additional uh, code can be generated here. So now that we have our JP entity class, let's go ahead and work with um, Spring Data. So we'll create a simple JPI repository. In other words, we'll create a simple extension of org Spring Framework Data JPA repository JPA repository. Click Next, and we'll call it um, Registration Repository. Click Finish. Here it is. This is all standard Spring Data code, repository resource uh, annotation, REST resource annotation, because we want to expose the, uh, the data via REST, and here, find by reservation name, and we will re we'll receive a name um, and expose our data. Um, our, that's our starting point. So what's next? We want to populate our JPA repository. For that, there's the very useful command line runner that I mentioned. Simple. So here, create a simple extension of old Spring Framework B command line runner. We click, click next and I say um, uh, reservation generator. Actually, this should not be registration repository, but reservation repository. Reservation repository. We are refactoring. We have our reservation CLR. Everything looking pretty good. Um, so you can see that we have a component annotation, so this will be called automatically by Spring Boot, auto wired into our um, uh, component is our reservation repository injected into it. And you can also see here that we have uh, full support for Java 8, the whole bunch of Java 8 code here, not the least, not the least of which uh, method references here or method handle, system out print line. And also you can see um, streams of, uh, stream of, uh, and here are three names, Andy, Chris, and Bruce. And we have our Lambda expression. Uh, interesting thing is we can, from here, revert uh, if we wanted to back to anonymous in a class, or from here, um, convert this uh, in, into a Lambda expression. So these tools are built into NetBeans. Um, and you can see our Lambda expression and uh, our call save uh, built into our repository. So this is the useful thing about these repository classes from Spring Boot that there is basic CRUD functionality uh, automatically built into it. So we'll, we'll save a new reservation into the repository for each of Andy, Chris, and Bruce automatically at startup because this is a command line runner. All very convenient. Okie doke. So um, let's uh, stop the application. And um, let's go back to our browser. Window web browser, and here we, we were at localhost, eighty eighty, and at metrics. Uh, so let's again go into the browser and copy the correct thing, and go back into NetBeans and let's try and keep the window open. Hmm, strange. Hmm. 
You might have to use the external browser after all. Maybe you should try 127. Well, no worries. You can use the external browser as we have been doing. Well, actually, no, we stopped our application. That's the reason why. Our application isn't running anymore. Okay, application isn't running anymore, so that makes sense why we're not seeing anything. So we're going to restart the application. And I'll do that by pressing F6 again. The application is restarted using our uh, built-in Spring Boot um, command. So the embedded Tomcat is going to start up again. And uh, this time, our reservation uh, command line runner will be run and will populate our repository uh, where we have a REST resource set up using a standard a Spring Boot way of, of doing things. And you can see here that we have uh, three reservations and Chris and Bruce. Back to the browser. Um, we have our metrics. And now we should be able to go to reservations. Okay. Back to the external browser. Instead of metrics, we want to see reservations. Okay, here are our reservations. You can see Andy, Chris, and Bruce, one, two, and three. And you could say one of them. So the first one is Andy. The second one is Chris. Okay. So I'm just going to copy this guy and get back into NetBeans. Ah, uh, refresh. Metrics, health, health, and there's reservations. Um, well, never mind. The, um, we saw it in the external browser. Let's give up on this one for a moment. Um, so, um, maybe we should try and make this a little bit smaller and then put the other one next to it. Mm -hmm. I'll try and make some space here. But my space isn't very... I'm just going to keep this. And you're going to have to keep switching back. Uh, so, we switch back. Um, so, everything is still running fine. Now, the question is, you want to do something with this data. And for that, we're going to make use of Oracle Jet. Oracle Jet is a, um, is a toolkit. It's not a library. It's not jet.js, and it's not a framework. It's not something like Angular, a full-stack framework. It is a combination of existing libraries, open-source libraries. So you can see that we have Jet, we have jQuery, um, we have jQuery UI, we have Knockout, RequireJS, Hammer, and these are all parts of the toolkit that is called Jet, the JavaScript extension toolkit. There's a lot of information for getting started. Um, there's a, a, a demo that uh, fully implements um, a lot of the uh, parts of this uh, toolkit. And there's a cookbook with uh, many recipes and steps for for integrating into the uh, into your own application, and um, so we're going to do that. Uh, so what I've done is I went to uh, get started here, and I went to use Quick Start, and then I was able to download a zip file. But soon a Yeoman generator will also be available, and that I have imported into NetBeans in a similar way to how I imported the Spring Initializer project into NetBeans. And we're going to use that as a starting point of our application. Uh, I'll go back to NetBeans. And here it is. Now, um, I have a pure front end application. You can see this JS here, which, is, uh, which contains Crossroads, 
from us, Hammer, History, Drakery, Signals, Knockout, Oracle Jet, and Require, which means that I can use all these libraries in my application. And it's in fact a require application. So require is used for modularity. You can see here a require entry point. And here there is um, a require uh, block, as you would always have in a require application. Uh, inside of our index page, we refer to that um, to that require uh, library. So I'm referring to the require library. And in my data domain, I'm pointing to that main.js file. So this is the entry point into the application. Require is going to uh, be responsible for um, for loading the modules into the application. I'll delete everything around here except the basic essentials. And that is that here we are loading the module called home. And the module called home means, so OJ module is going to look inside of a folder called view models for a file called home.js. So I'll just delete the other ones just to avoid confusion. Home.js, and it will automatically look inside the folder called views for a file called home HTML. So both of those um, are here. So you can see OJ table. I have a table here, and on the JavaScript side, I'm using a, a get JSON call to that uh, URL reservations, localhost 8080 slash reservations, doing a bit of parsing of the, uh, of the payload, and then we're adding, um, for each reservation name that you find, we're pushing that into this um, observable array from Knockout. So Knockout will take care of observing changes. We'll build a data source uh, object here, as you see here, um, from that observable array um, with, its, uh, with an ID attribute set uh, to ID. And then on the home HTML side, we refer to the data source. So here you can see there's a reference to the data source property that we have defined um, inside of home.js and filled inside of home.js. So let's run the application, which means just opening it in the browser. When you do that, you can see our Andy, Chris, and Bruce, and there's sorting built in and all the kinds of functionality you would expect in a table. Um, so that's basically um, a front end on top of our um, Spring Boot back end. So we started with, with Spring Boot. We didn't add all that much code ourselves. Pretty much everything was generated. We generated the, um, the reservation entity, which has an ID and a reservation name. We generated the reservation command line runner, which fills our JPA repository that we have here with some initial content, which is exposed as a REST resource, which enables us to get hold of it um, in our JavaScript. It could be any JavaScript, or it could be any Java, it could be any front end at all. But in this case, we're getting hold of it via a um, define block, which means that we are in a require module, and this uh, require module is part of a JET application, and it's a JET application because it contains a folder called OJ, inside of which we have a long list of JET components. So these are all jQuery UI components that you can find in the cookbook. So back in the cookbook, once you're um, in the cookbook, you can see that what I have used is a table. Here's a table, uh, OJ table. There's a reference here to OJ table, and this is this is how Knockout expresses its components. And on the uh, JavaScript side is how the content of the table is built up. And I've done that, but much cooler components exist. For example, uh, charts and maps and gauges and timelines and these kinds of uh, components that you can use for your applications. 
Um, so I've used the OJ table. And here it is. So I'm using that inside of the um, application. But there's a lot more that you could um, that you could add to it. So let's add another module here. Um, and we'll call this... Um, uh, let's imagine that uh, uh, reservation duration. Reservation duration. And inside of reservation duration, uh, we might want to have a bar chart. And here is a bar chart, which is as simple to create as this. So I copy from here, and I paste that into the HTML side. I go back there. And I paste the content of this function, so we don't need a require block here because we're inside of a defined block already. Um, so I copy this content, uh, paste it into the JavaScript side of our reservation duration. And so you can see here, all these various uh, properties are defined. And so here is our data as well. I need to make sure of one thing, and that is that the chart is actually loaded. So we can, only those components that we decide to load are the ones that will be loaded. So OJS and OJ chart. You also see the, the um, code completion here, and similarly here, you can see all the available uh, JET components with the documentation. And also, when you look at the properties of each of the components, you can see the related code completion and also the documentation for the related property. So I've included the chart. But let's take another look at our application. Back in the browser. We haven't loaded reservation duration yet. I'm just going to close this. But it will open automatically when we redeploy the application. And we have reservation duration, but inside of the index page, we need to refer to it so that it will be loaded. So here is reservation duration. And you run the application again. And you see the chart as well as our table. So we could hook these together, and um, we can add all kinds of components and do so very quickly. Uh, back in NetBeans, we can use um, layout components. So here's the palette, dock it, and we can drag and drop a layout from here into there. There's a number of different ways in which you can express your layout in JET, but here is one of them. So we have um, home. So we put this one here. And we also have a reservation duration. And you might want a footer of some kind. We don't have yet, so we'll create it. And you can see here that this points to, this is name and this is view name. So view name means it will only look for an HTML file, and name means it will look for a JavaScript file as well as an HTML file. And you can see also that here are CSS classes, extra large, large, and small. So depending on the screen size, there'll be a resizing done automatically. We'll add a, um, a, we, a home should be, Home in here, not a variable. And we need to have a footer HTML. So let's bring out these guys again and put in here a footer. And this footer HTML. Uh, hello from footer. So run the application I'm back in the browser. You now see the start of some layouts. On the left-hand side, we have the chart, and in the middle part, we have our 
um, our table with our data from Spring Boot, and below that we can have some kind of footer running along the bottom. So those are the basic um, ideas of um, of Jet, and it, you can see it integrates very well with uh, with Spring Boot. It's not much work to uh, to set up, and it's all free and um, available from the Oracle Jet site based on open source libraries. And those Jet components will very soon be open sourced as well. A lot of examples, a lot of resources, and a lot of support for this uh, front end. It's pure front end technology. Forum, FAQ, blogs, a development guide, a lot of documentation, and so on. So a nice and simple way to create front ends for um, these kinds of back end uh, applications. So um, to recap where we are, um, we're doing the webinar about Spring Boot and NetBeans. Um, what we've done is we started um, with the main focus of the webinar to look at uh, Spring Boot. And a wonderful starting point is the Spring Initializer, start with spring.io, where you can specify which dependencies you want to have, what kind of tools you want to use. And we specify that for packaging, we want to use a WAR file. We downloaded that, we um, imported it into NetBeans. We're using a JPA entity class, a command line runner for populating a Spring Data JPA repository. We are using a Spring Boot actuator to get some metrics and some health statistics and that kind of information about our system and our environment. Spring loaded, we haven't used yet. So back inside of NetBeans. We go into our, our, our first, our first uh, undeploy the project. So it's not running anymore right now. Clear everything here. Look at the pump file. And in the same way that we added Spring Actuator, we can also use the Spring Boot Tools for NetBeans uh, plugin to generate uh, Spring Loaded code. So I'm pressing Alt and Search. Or you can right-click and choose Insert Code, and choose Spring Loaded. Here it is. So that's all. It's, that's all that, that you need to do. Um, we, we are setting this as a dependency of the Spring Boot Maven plugin, and you will see the difference immediately. So once we press F6 again to to deploy the application, we we'll take a look, and we should see a notification from Spring Loaded. Here, attaching agents. There you go. That's um, the important information here. So the agent is being attached here. Um, and it's done simply by adding that, um, that dependency. OK, so we've included um, been loaded as well. So it will be, not, it'll be watching for changes and updating uh, as needed. Uh, back in the browser. Um, so. Instead of using uh, the built-in uh, server integration on NetBeans, what we're doing is we're using Spring Boot Run Maven Build Goal. And we've overridden the um, run project to not do a Maven package, but to use this instead. And of course, um, we're doing all of this in NetBeans IDE, which is free and open source. Um, it has a lot of plugins. It has a large community. People everywhere are using it. Great Java support. Um, efficient project management, rapid user interface development, debugger and profiler built in, HTML5, uh, JavaScript built in. Click on NetBeans IDE here, and you can see all the different um, high-level features with links to the related tutorials and so on. So Java on the server, you can read all about the different server support. Uh, and uh, you can see, you read here about Spring support. You can also um, follow tutorials that have been written about uh, NetBeans in combination with Spring. And with the, this is the official support built into NetBeans. You can really get your, um, your road into Spring um, started with um, NetBeans itself, plus its documentation and tutorials. There is a um, roadmap, a publicly available roadmap, NetBeans all community releases roadmap, where you can see um, the latest developments and um, the upcoming features. And currently, we are on NetBeans IDE 8.1. So you can go to this uh, Learn More link here, and you'll see information 
about the newest features, including Node.js application development. Um, so if you want to do Node on the back end, um, and that means it's as simple as going here and saying that you want Node. And let's say I want to create a, a server. Uh, my, we'll call it awesome server. Let's create a server in Node. How much work is that? And it's not much work at all. Node HTTP. And here we have a server. The interesting thing is that you can do create completion within the require statement of Node. And you will see that you can um, see the available modules, but also the related documentation below that. And right now we're using HTTP. So there's the documentation for it. When you press control space on HTTP, you can see um, the method calls from the module that we're currently using. So right now we're using HTTP. So here's HTTP.js. Let's change this to uh, the console. So now I'll do great completion here, and you can see the function calls from console are available here. Um, so that kind of support is just built into NetBeans. And you can run this, and immediately you will have uh, a Node.js backend application. You can look at the um, HTML, HTML tab here and see that there's support for Node, also for Express to generate the front end um, for your Node.js application, Novel Platforms, Karma, Go, Grunt, CSS Processes, Bower, so a lot of the new, um, latest new stuff for anyone doing JavaScript development. Back in NetBeans, uh, back in the browser, you can see also there's new Gulf support, and there's Mocha and Selenium, many new Java enhancements, PHP enhancements, Profiler, uh, and so on. Um, you can take a look at the upcoming release, which is set for August. And in that release, there will be ECMAScript 6 support. There will be Nodes enhancements, Jet enhancements. Docker support. So this is going to be really great. You can, you'll be able to work with Docker directly from NetBeans. PHP 7 support, many people have been asking for. Also useful for JavaScript development, you'll be able to use multiple carrots for the first time in NetBeans. Not so useful for Java developers because there you would use refactoring tools. But in JavaScript and HTML, people like doing um, multiple carrots. So that will be there. Pinnable watches is a feature that lets you um, directly inside of the editor, see the uh, changing values um, as you use the debugger. So this is connected to the debugger. You won't need to have the debugger open to see directly inside of the editor the current value of something that is being debugged. And you can see um, also the, the schedule. The um, next big release, uh, the major release, will be NetBeans 9, which is released together with Java 9. So when Java 8 came out, there was NetBeans 8. Java 7 was NetBeans 7 and Java 9 will be NetBeans 9. Um, that's basically an overview of um, myself and of Spring Boot and of NetBeans and of Oracle Jet and how you can combine all of these different things together into creating applications. Um, in particular, you, you have seen how smoothly you can integrate um, with Spring Boot from NetBeans and how quickly you can set things up and how many useful tools there are. Maybe at this point we should pause a bit for uh, question time. Are there any questions? Hi, Gertin. So thank you so much. So there you, we do have a question from Ravi. Is it possible multiple uh, to run multiple configurations in NetBeans? Multiple configurations of what? Of Maven. You can see um, if you're asking about uh, configurations in Maven, you can see that there is a drop down at, in, the, uh, in the toolbar, and you can specify which of the configurations you want to use. So this is uh, Spring Boot, uh, the Spring Boot project. And you can see that these are the configurations that are available. 
um, uh, the release profile, or you can customize and provide your own uh, profile and specify which one you want to activate and which one you want to use. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, I think that uh, currently was the only um, question in queue here, John. Uh, is is there anything else maybe um, that uh, is kind of going on in NetBeans that you would like to talk about, um, you know, independent of Spring Boot or, or Spring-related features? Uh, you know, you've already covered a couple things, but uh, anything else you want to mention before we close it up? And if there are questions, folks, this is the time. I think uh, one one feature that is really powerful and that people need to know about is if you're doing um, front-end development, so say on top of Spring Boot. Um, so I run this application, and I look back in the browser. Uh, let me just close that application. So I'll I'll close everything here. And I'll run this application. This is something that is really powerful and that a lot of people don't know about. You can see that I have this blue uh, NetBeans icon in the in the um, in the browser, which comes from which is the, the Chrome Connector plugin and is available in the Chrome Web Store. And because I have that installed, I can, for example, change the resolution and see what this application looks like on a smartphone portrait. Okay, so that's maybe interesting, but not very exciting. But what is exciting is I can click on this here and say inspect in NetBeans mode. And what that does is it lets me click on items in the browser and see what they are defined in NetBeans. So, ooh, that is nice. I'll just open the, uh, I'll open the uh, browser DOM window. And now I have a live DOM view. Um, and I need to open the browser at the same time. Let me see if I can pin it. Uh, I'd like to put them next to each other, ideally. And let's put this one here. Um, this and that. Okay. Let me put them next to each other a bit. Here they are, and okay, NetBeans is a bit smaller now, and I can see the browser next to it. So normally, I mean, you have no idea where something is found in your development environment, but as I click on items in the browser, I can see where they are in the IDE. So the uh, footer, for example, so I can click from here and go to the source, and there is the footer. So let me um, type something here. Hello world. Up there. I can see this up here. I can click on, on, on items in the browser. Uh, and back in the IDE, uh, see if those items are found. This is pretty slick here, John. A lot of our Spring Boot users, you know, uh, do you choose to use JavaScript on the front end? Um, so yeah. this is pretty cool. Yeah. So so let so let let me let's imagine that we don't have um, a Jet application, but just a simple simple normal standard uh, JavaScript application. Um, I've I've not added anything to it, and so I'll show you just from the very basics how that how it works or why it's so powerful. So I run this uh, into the uh, into the current browser. Starts up. And so right now we don't have very much content. I'll, I'll add a couple more items in here. I'll say inspect a NetBeans mode. And now you can see, I can see exactly which, which item um, um, which item I, I am selecting in the browser. And so I found the one that I'm on, so I can go to the source, and there it is. So let's say I want to change this to H1. So this is now H1. I didn't refresh the browser. The browser automatically refreshes itself. Now I'll add a style sheet. So let's add a style sheet. 
I'll call it styles. And let me drag and drop that style sheet into my uh, application, or into my website. So I've included the style sheet, and in the style sheet, I'm now going to say, um, uh, I think color, color is red for H1. You can see immediately the browser is updated. So I can change it to something different. I haven't refreshed the browser. I haven't even pressed save. I'm not pressing save. I'm just changing and tweaking, and once I'm happy with it, then I'll save. But until I do that, um, it will just uh, automatically keep track of what, what changes I've made. Um, so there's also a, related to that, a CSS styles window. So I can click on this, and I can see, okay, here is the style, and I can change the style directly inside of NetBeans. And you can see that it updates itself in the browser. I didn't press refresh anywhere. So I can, I can change that H1 to whatever I like and automatically see the change back in the browser. I can jump from here into the source, and there is my source. What I can also do is I can say I'm using Chrome Developer Tools. So I'm going to Chrome Developer Tools. Um, you will see that there is a tab here, NetBeans, which means any changes I make in CDT will automatically be saved into my file in NetBeans. I won't need to copy and paste from CDT into my editor. And all of this is possible because of one plugin that you can install, which is the um, NetBeans connector plugin, um, which is on the Chrome App Store. Excellent. Got some great oh, hey, uh, here, John, um, there was one of the there was one other question um, from uh, Edwin uh, Lopez. He, he was uh, curious. He says one of his approaches is kind of, you know, he'll create his HTML5 app using Grunt, and then once he builds that with Grunt, he's going to pack it into the war, and he's curious if there's a way to automate that uh, within NetBeans. Sure. I mean, there's this Grunt support um, baked into NetBeans, so um, I can add a Grunt file. Uh, so let's first add a grunt file, um, new file, uh, grunt. There's my grunt file. And finish. And there it is. Here's my grunt file. So now I can add uh, content to that. And we'll see that here's grunt. So the cool thing is when I do build project on my project, I can call a, um, a task for my grunt file. And when I run my project, so when I do build, I can create a, a task in here that, uh, that builds my project and it creates a wall file and whatever. And then whenever I do build here or when I press a keyboard shortcut, that task in my grunt file will be run. Awesome. In the same, um, way, I just in the same way there's support for in the, in the same way there's support for Gulp um, as well. And, um, and and Bower and, and and similar uh, new features. Cool. Thanks, Christian. Um I, I just also want to direct people's attention to the resource tab uh, in their user interface, uh, <clears throat> which yeah, should be down on the bottom um, of the webinar interface. If you click on the resources tab, uh, there are some follow-ups uh, where you can obviously go down download, download NetBeans um, and uh, a couple of other things. Um, I think probably some of the plugins that Gary John's been talking about. Yes. Um, do you want to you want to maybe do a, a very because we got to wrap this up. Um, do you do you mind doing a very quick uh, kind of um, you know what what's in the resource tab and explain kind of what's there for people to click on and, and take us through our next steps? Yeah. So the next steps for anyone watching uh, would be to go to netinstall.org and click on the downloaded tab, and uh, probably you would want to choose the Java EE distribution which lets you do uh, development with Spring Boot, as well as uh, HTML5 and JavaScript on the front end. Um, and uh, to use that plugin, so in the resources tab, you'll see a link to the Spring Boot tools for NetBeans plugin, which is um, on the plugin portal as well. Um, so, and also, the, there's another plugin reference there for the Spring um, configuration. Um, if I go to my plugins, 
Spring Boot tools for NetBeans. Um, this page um, provides a link where you can download um, the um, NBM file. And once you've clicked on this download uh, uh, button, you will go into NetBeans and you will go to Tools and Plugins and install that NBM file using the downloaded tab to do so. And then you will have all these templates and, and, um, and code generators that are used for, um, for creating the Spring Boot files, for example. These Java classes come from that uh, template, as well as that core support. Very, very powerful um, and a typical stumbling block that you don't know how to set up cores. So you can see here that Spring Cores is, just generates all of this code that you see here. If anyone has any feedback or has any features they want to have added to the Spring Boot tools for NetBeans plugin, please let me know. It's simply available on GitHub. So uh, another action item would be to fork my, um, my GitHub repository. Uh, on GitHub, you will find uh, Spring Boot tools for NetBeans. Please do fork it uh, and also put in requests for new features. If you're missing anything, you, you, you're using Spring Boot with NetBeans, and you're frustrated by anything, just go in here and file an issue, and uh, we'll work on, um, on making you very happy with Spring Boot and NetBeans. Awesome. Thank you That's so it. much, Kirchon. Appreciate it. Um, it's great. And uh, um, uh, it, uh, the same guy, uh, Edwin, was curious about uh, J-Hipster support. Uh, we're running out of time, so if we could just give that like a simple binary yes or no answer and then move on, that would be great. Well, anything that supports Maven um, is supported by NetBeans, and J-Hipster is built on Spring Boot, which supports Maven, so you can open that project into NetBeans for sure. So uh, if Maven is at, uh, at the base of it, or Gradle, NetBeans also supports Gradle, um, and that means you can open Gradle projects in the same way. You need the Gradle plugin for that. But JHipster will work out of the box on NetBeans too. Cool. Cool. Okay. I, I think probably what he was getting at is, uh, do you think you have any plans to, to tool specifically for JHipster as opposed to be compatible with, uh, if I could read in between oh, the lines of his question. But. Sure. Um, I, I'm going to be exploring to hipster. I know Matt Rabel, um, and uh, it's on my list of to-dos to take a look, but it should be a simple question of just opening a, a J-Hipster project and running it. I'm not sure that you should need any special tools to do that, but right. I'll take a right. look soon. Sure, yeah. Um, I'd be happy to connect you, too, with uh, Julian Dubois if, um, if, if that would be helpful, uh, if that's something you ever would be using. He's the main author. Um, if uh, that would be useful for you. All right, well, um, hey, folks, I just want to say real quick that um, we are publishing the – this is being recorded, and we are publishing the replay uh, to spring.io forward slash video and spring.io forward slash blog. Uh, I posted a question on that in the um, Q&A interface, so that if you just want to cut and paste the URLs, you can. Um, and we'll usually post the replay in about a week, uh, you know, sometimes a little sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, but uh, – you, you will get, you know, you'll eventually get an email notice, but uh, if you want a faster notification, um, I'd recommend going to the YouTube channel uh, at spring.io forward slash video and hitting subscribe, or better yet, go to the spring.io forward slash blog and subscribe to the Atom feed there, because then you'll also get the other um, great blog content from the Spring team. Um, if you're looking for Spring Boot bits uh, and you're looking to get a hold of actual software, um, as you probably know, we really try to um, encourage Maven or Gradle usage. But if you're desperate uh, for HTTP downloads, uh, and you're just you know you're on a closed network or a military network or you know behind too many layers of proxy servers or something, uh, you know you can get the HTTP downloads uh, from our Artifactory um, nightly repo, which is located at repo.spring.io. Again, that's repo.spring.io. Uh, if for some reason you're desperately in need of HTTP downloads. Um, I think that's it. Uh, Peter John, thank you so much. Um, really appreciate it. And um, anything you want to say before we close out? No. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening. And um, have fun with Spring Boot and NetBeans. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for your time. See you in the next webinar.